Take my money. Yes, this is the old good here coming at you with another exciting video. Just wanted to do a quick, short, sweet follow up video to the 15 minute version I did prior to this one. Pri that way, prior to this one, if you went ahead and saw that. This is beauty at its finest. This is the Magna Cut version of the AK 6.5, the Architect Field Buddy AK 6.5 in Magna Cut knife. This is just truly a piece to behold. Anyways, here's what it looks like. Kind of like when you get it, you do get your Kydex sheath or whatever you order. Or what, if you want to get the leather dangler or whatever, then you get your scales, right? These are the G10 blaze orange scales, which are pretty much like a hard resin plastic is how I would describe them. Then you get your hardware, right? To assemble. There's your screws and nuts and bolts and all that. And they do give you two Allen wrenches so that you have like both angles covered when you go ahead and tighten. Quick tip, as I mentioned in the other video, plumber's tape, Teflon tape. That's usually what I use when I assemble this because the blue, what is it? The blue Loctite tends to be like blue Loctite, at least the Teflon tape, the plumber's Teflon tape, just give like two or three wraps around each little screw right there. I think has more squishiness, like more give, like it maintains the firm tightness. That's what she said but it also has a little more give. So as your hand heats, heats up the metal when you're using it, there's just a little more give. And then they give you this set. I still haven't figured out what these are for. I'm sure I'll figure that out eventually. These are for something. And then I opted for the SE belt clip, the paddle clip. I don't know exactly what this is called. So I've got this. I usually don't put these on my knives because it's just extra weight that I got to carry. If you saw the video prior to this one, You'll see me get into that, but I just have it as an option just in case if I ever needed it or whatever. But the blade itself, just to relish in it in the savory goodness that it is. So basically going from the pummel, obviously as close as I can, er, to the end, to the very, very tip. You're looking at just over 12 inches, like 12, like depending on exactly how you line up this part back here, right? And get everything squared away and all that. You're looking at somewhere around 12 and a quarter inches, like not quite 12 and a half, but that's basically what that's all about. I love the, f the feel, the finish of the actual blade itself. It's kind of like a satin stone washy kind of thing going on. It does still feel very smooth, like very smooth, not, not textured at all, which, which, which is what I was kind of expecting, but it's very smooth. It's very like polished. It's very nice feeling. And then let me get some of this other stuff out of the way. So just to quickly recap what I covered in the other video, but keeping this one short and sweet, you do get a textured pummel back here with a little bit of jimping on the end of the pummel, which is kind of nice. What it feels like is even though, let me flip this around without killing myself. Basically what it feels like is, is you do get like polishing, but it's also rough. So like in the middle areas, it's rough. So it does kind of have like a little bit of a texture to it when you run your fingers across, but like the outer edges are smooth, but the center is rough. So that's what gives you that, that grippage back there. Like when you pummel something, you're going to make, you're going to connect with that walnut shell or whatever you're trying to, maybe literally whatever you're trying to, you know, connect with or whatever. Same holds true with the jimping up here. I'm not a jimping fan at all. Like I'd rather just have it smooth because if I had to use the finger troll and do some fine detail work, you know, whatever, I just, I just, I don't know. I'm not like a jimping guy, but anyways, it came with it, so I got it, and that was the option. But like I said, it's basically smooth on this outer edge, but once you get to the center of the jimping, you'll feel like some grippiness, some texture. And obviously, if you're using work gloves or some kind of camp gloves or whatever, and you're doing that, you know, more power to you, you're just going to get more of a grip. The finger troil itself, I feel, is decent. You know, it's got like enough of a troil right here that you can get your finger in there and kind of do your, you know, fine edge work and that kind of stuff. Great little knife, you know, overall, just a great little knife. I do like the belly of it, right? The actual belly. I I know there's some of you out there that are probably going to use this as like your primary maybe hunting knife. Like you're going to go skinning game with it and that kind of stuff. And maybe you do, you know, you want to carve out that wooden spoon when you're doing your bushcrafty kind of stuff. Me, I'm going to baton the F out of this thing. <laughs> Just saying, that's why I bought it. I bought it as a batoner because some of the wood that I encounter up in the Angeles Forest, San Gabriel Mountains here in Southern California, 
It's a combination of either pine or oak. So I want to be able to go through pine like butter, but yet at the same time, I want to be able to process some wooden oak logs that are, you know, up to, let's say five, six inches in diameter. What I'm waiting on, my next purchase from this company will be the AK-8. I tried to jump in on it when it first became available that day. I think it was like about, has it been a month? Yeah, it's been like a month since the AK-8 came out. But man, it sold out within like nine minutes, like nine or ten minutes. So I didn't have a chance to put whatever I wanted in terms of the handles and the sheath and the blah, blah, blah. So I just, I missed out on that one. But when it becomes available again, I think I'm going to try to jump on that. Anyways, for batoning, this is what I'm going to use. This I'm going to use this knife for batoning. Stay tuned. I am going to make more videos. Obviously, when it's fully assembled, I'll do that video. And then what I'm also going to do is I own, I was lucky enough to get a first edge 50-50. So I'm going to compare this to the 50-50. And also I have a SE laser strike. So I'm going to compare this to the 50-50 to the laser strike. Because I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're probably sitting there going like, what do I buy? What do I need? What's an all around knife? Do you have specific knives for specific purposes? Is it like you want one knife to rule them all and you want that kind of vibe going? That's why this channel exists. Old Coot product reviews, do the math. I get products, I buy, I paid for this sucker on my own, okay? And it was pretty pricey. I think I paid upwards of like 250. Is that what it was? 250, like almost 300 bucks for this thing. Well worth it. Trust me. Like for the super steels, like Magna Cut, you know, I got to admit, I've heard like some other companies having problems or whatever. I'm not going to mention any names, you know, but, and I actually ordered one of their knives. So I'm still waiting on that sucker. By the way, turnaround time on this was one week. So from the day that I was lucky enough to place the order, to the time they sent me the shipping information, all very professional, great communication, boom, 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 like one after another. I would say from the day I placed the order to the day I got the knife was exactly one week, maybe even less. I think it was like six days or something like that. But definitely this Architect Knives, this company is on point. Like they got their S together, if you know what I'm talking about. They got it together together. And they're basically giving you good quality stuff. Anyways, I don't want this video to get too long, but you kind of have an idea what's going on. Just a quick little, there's the top side of water. If you want to see that, it's almost a quarter of an inch thick. It's just shy. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but if you want to just see for measuring, like there's the three, let's go off of the three. So you're just shy of like a quarter of an inch thick. And then here's the underside of water. Oh, in case you wanted to see that view right there, which I haven't seen too much of. In other people's videos, but there's your actual, you know, what, what the geometry looks like. Here's the tip geometry. If you want to go ahead and take a look at that from the underside, here's the tip geometry from the top side, right? Just so you can see that. Here's your actual blade edge. If you want to see that action going on. So there you go. Trying to get different angles. You can, you can take your notes, right? And do all that good stuff. That's what the edge edge is like. There's your signature. Anyways, I will put links down below in the description. Make sure to check those out. Also make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm the old coot and I will catch you all on the next exciting ah video review. <laughs>